John Murphy. <clears throat> First question for you. Um, in letting Mr. Atherton speak, is that part of normal business that if you have an issue in front of you, the public's allowed to speak at that time? Um, this was something that uh, he asked to speak, and uh, quick the question. town recorder had quick questions to the town recorder, and we allow it, yeah. So it's, it is no, it's normal procedure to allow that if you're discussing an item on the agenda? Uh, it was about an item that was that we were discussing. Yeah, yeah. it was actually not a uh, ordinance item. Okay. It was a business item. Okay. They're a little bit different. Okay, so just to make sure I understand, if you have a business item up that if the public has questions specifically about that, that they're allowed to ask that question? Yes. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Um, I would like to go back to a question Mr. W Mr. Williams uh, deferred for later in the meeting earlier. Um, I asked about whether or not the rules of public comment for the public also apply to the Board of Aldermen, the Board Mayor and Aldermen, mm -hmm. all of you folks. Ask, let him ask his questions. Let him finish. Yeah. And okay. And then we'll, uh, can sit yep. down and we'll Thank you. That's so, so my first question is that do the rules that the people like myself have to live under, do you folks also follow on, have to follow those rules? Specifically, uh, item number eight, personal attacks and malicious comments shall not be tolerated. Uh, that is a question, if I appreciate you answering it. Um, the next question I'd like to ask is, does the town have enforcement em employees who do enforcement where they go to private residences and tell the residents they're only allowed to have two candidate yard signs out on their front yard? The other thing is I would just like to leave as a comment that I show up to one meeting two weeks ago I haven't been attend I've watched meetings. I haven't had the time to attend. A week later, um, my personal private business is blasted all over Facebook by a member of this board. And then tonight, two of you bring up where I'm from, actually call the town that I haven't lived in in five years, discussing a position I haven't held in nine. And I'm just wondering if you folks have checked with the town attorney about whether or not that's ethical under Tennessee law. I'm a private citizen. I was a private citizen two weeks ago. I'm still a private citizen today. I expect to be treated in New Jersey and New York and the Northeast the way I was treated tonight. Honestly, I'm personally offended. I feel I wasn't treated with respect. I was gaveled down, not allowed to talk, interrupted, and then singled out. I did write a letter to the Farragut Press those are my opinions and amazing how you folks are spending time reacting to it here including my comments from the last meeting I'd like to invoke a rule in East Tennessee that I've learned if you'd like you can give me a call my phone number's out there Mr. Williams I spoke to you I don't even know if you remember what we did when I first moved here you were gracious enough to give me an hour and a half of your time uh, and I appreciated that and I thought most of what you said was pretty reasonable I haven't spoken to any of the other you in person but um, I thought we had that rule in Tennessee. So um, I would appreciate if you could answer the questions and thank you for my few minutes of time. No, whoa, don't sit down. Yeah, well, no, I don't. You need to sit down. No, we don't Good. need to converse. I don't need to converse. No, I, I want to. I, I'd like for him to stand there so he can hear us, unless you want to sit down. I would like to sit down just because it's been okay. a long day. And, um, Go right ahead. I'll sit down. Want me first? Yeah. You okay. First, first off, um, I, I to start it out tonight with an education because uh, the letter um, that was written, it was personal to me. It was written, um, apparently, you can attack me, call me out, and take me out of context, but I'm not allowed to respond uh, because I might be called a bully or being disrespectful. So he, I'm going to take, I'm going to unpack this point by point. The first statement that was um, stated in the letter is it's highly unusual for a town to propose major change, zoning changes without someone filling out an application. This is wholly inaccurate and demonstrably false. And I, try, I, had, to, I had to clarify that. This is, this is a uh, way it is done. This is how zoning ordinances are amended in Tennessee, in municipalities in Tennessee, calling up Alcoa and I called up Maryville to to have assurances that they they handle it the same way we do and most of the zoning changes most of the text amendments that are made to zoning ordinances are um, 
town that town initiated staff initiated they have they get together they talk about whatever the or the text amendment needs to be they present it to the planning commission and then it goes to the board of mayor and alderman that is how it's done that is how it's always been done and uh, this statement here uh, makes it sound like we're doing something out of character which is not the truth and it needed to be called out um, I was taken complete out of context on what road do we really want another tire store this was with regard to the planned commercial development which if you read the planned commercial development zoning ordinance it sp specifically talks about t um, auto oriented and how to how to try to um, wrangle it and not have it and that's called, talking about gas stations no we don't need a tire store in PCD no the Board of Mayor and Alderman does not need to get into the private market if the uh, property is zoned C1 and they want to put a tire store in all the more power to them they've done they've done their market research they think that they're going to have a successful business there no matter what it is they have a right use by right if they're zoned C1 it's allowed they follow all of our ordinances go for it but a planned commercial development is a different type of development we are looking for something that is community oriented we're looking for something that is walkable pedestrian oriented something that's unique and and um, we want to be able to kind of have a little more say over what goes in there um, I would say this I, I can unpack some other stuff the uh, the government has two main responsibilities in land use first creating and following a comprehensive land use plan which we have um, and it's been professionally done our first plan was from 2001 to 2011 that's our first uh, transportation land use policy now this was they 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 did this um, that board of mayor and aldermen um, put that together with the local planning assistance office of the Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development. I suspect we didn't have three pennies to rub together in 2001 to spend to to put a plan like this together. So that's why we worked through this because that's what we could afford to do in 2001 or 2000. So when that plan it came overdue in 2011, um, at the end of 2011, we passed a um, crap. Jared. Uh oh. Take your sons. Take um, it. Yeah, you yeah. um, yeah. I'll, you'll say what you need to say. But okay. I'm going to go talk to my son. He's in South Korea um, in the Army. I talk to him like every three weeks. So. Okay. Uh, start off with something that I always mention is that. Uh, the mayor and vice mayor shall maintain control of the meeting to provide a professional objective environment. And that we have a comment protocol. And uh, one of the things that uh, I ask that uh, when you, you step up, uh, we really don't need a life history of, of what we just need for you to comment on that particular item. Now, when you go to Citizens Forum, you can pretty well talk about whatever you want to. But when it is an, a, uh, an agenda item as far as an ordinance, then we'd like to uh, stay on protocol or stay on point with that's the protocol and uh, at that point if you can do that then there's not an issue uh, when you don't then that's when we have to uh, try to maintain control of the meeting uh, we're we're basically here number one uh, to do town business and uh, that's that's primarily what we're here for and a lot of times uh, as Mr. Wilson would know, he has a lot of, of comment that, that goes into what we do and have done for a number of years. It's very constructive, and it's, it's not uh, designed for anything else but being constructive, and that's kind of what we're about here. So um, to say that I signaled you out, uh, no, I've not signaled you out. Uh, if you do not stay on point, then that's we're here to stay on point so we can move on uh, enforcement of yard signs we do have a uh, person that uh, uh, does those kind of things I think the law says one sign per candidate uh, David can you expand on that Mayor I was trying to find that exact wording I don't have it in front of me I'm still looking for it in but our sign there is in our sign ordinance yeah. yes sir but 
as those are the exclusion those are part of the exclusions they're not in the body of it there's an exclusion for um, I was just looking at it the other day I, I've had three or four signs of individual candidates in my yard I don't think we write we try to regulate that our main thing is we try to make sure that any sign that's in the right of way is is out yeah. of the right of way or if it's in a view of a car that needs to go around a corner or something like that and it's taking up you yeah. can't see clearly. Yeah. Those are the things we really try to regulate. I think Tennessee law addresses the uh, single sign. They do have a. I was trying to find that in Tennessee law. There is a Tennessee law about political signs. Yeah. Yes, it, uh, and we it, it's something that. pretty recent uh, that. Uh, I mean, it, it's easily looked up. But, uh, I don't have that handy. We can look it up. We, yeah. We'll look it up. If you have an issue with how it's written, that particular part, that um, you need to email one of us and we'll figure out what, because that sign ordinance, we had to adopt a new sign. Obviously, you know that we had to adopt a new sign ordinance, and, and we're all wrestling through how you do. Uh, yes, that was a painful process. We're all wrestling through how um, you do a non-content-based sign ordinance, and I, I, have, I suspect most municipalities and local governments are. So... Is that all you had? Because yeah, I can continue. I so um, I, I'm going to – I'll go back to – I'll finish up with the land use plan. So we adopted the land use plan in December of 2012. We went through an entire planning process, basically the whole year of, of 2012, gathering uh, community input um, and putting it all together and finally adopting it. And it was quite an intensive process, I understand. I was not involved in the development of the land use plan. I started in July of 2013, and this was handed to me. And it was, a, it was overwhelmingly daunting to read it and understand it and digest it and then apply it. And, um, and part, one of the policies is you, in five years, you, you, we need to review and possibly update, which is what we're in the middle of doing. So we've used the plan. The plan has been effective. Um, it's very helpful. It's not perfect, um, but it is it is a professionally done plan that um, we've been working through and trying to update with our with citizen input, which I think for the most part has been pretty successful. I called up your hometown because you refer to it. I have served on my local zoning commission in my former hometown, so you called out your former hometown. I know I know that you served in Woodbury. So I wanted to know, okay, how do they handle things in Woodbury? If you're saying this is highly unusual for a town to do this, how do they do it in Woodbury? And I spoke to the gentleman, and he, he, I explained how we work, and he says, yeah, we don't do it like that. Okay, that's great. It works differently in Connecticut. They, they do it a little differently than we do. But just because we do it different doesn't mean that we're doing something wrong. And that uh, I found that uh, disturbing because a lot of people – in our town, well, a lot of people, period, don't understand how local government works because you don't learn it in high school. It is you come here and you think, what's going on? The first time I came here, I didn't know, I didn't know what was going on. Um, it's, it, I was at a planning commission meeting telling them, fix this road, not that road, and, and uh, didn't know where we were, they were in the process. It's, a, it's, it's hard. And so when someone writes that and proposes that we're doing something wrong, when this is what we do, I have to I have to correct that record. We need people involved in our town. We need we are a community of residents. We were founded by a community of people who wanted to be separate from Knox County for very specific reasons. If we lose who we are, which is residents running this, we're we're going we're gonna go right back to being something that we we were founded not to be. We are run by residents who care about our community. We might see things differently, but um, I'm working through the plans that were provided. This is, uh, if, if, if it needs to be different, if, we, if we're finding out, okay, well, that needs to change, we do it. We're doing it through community input. But I'm so tired of people attacking me for following a land use plan that was adopted in 2012. 45-minute waits to pick up your school children. If we widened Kingston Pike to four lanes on each side, you'd still be waiting 45 minutes because the problem isn't our capacity of roads. It's the fact that when you get on campus, everybody has to get down to one lane, and there's inefficiencies on campus when 3,500 kids, parents, um, 
uh, administrators and teachers all show up to be at the uh, one place at one time you only have three access points there's a problem you know this this the, if they, there's some there's some need for some efficiencies on campus because once you get on campus it's a slog and we, we were looking at can we put another entrance point in can you can you put a loop around the back of the high school that maybe connects that and provides another stacking area so that people stop stopping on the circle there's, there may be solutions there, but everything's an investment. And of course, we know how much money Knox County gives to the Farragut schools. So um, you uh, mentioned something about first, the First Baptist Church. They are property owners. They, are, they have the right to apply for these light poles. And they, are, they have due process to a, a, a process that everybody else goes through, workshop, uh, planning commission recommendation, and first and second readings. They workshopped, and then we found some more extra material um, information that needed to be considered by them and the residents. They have not come back for more discussion. The ball is in their court. They are the applicant. We are required, whether we agree with what they want to do or not, we are required to allow them to go through the process. That doesn't mean they get their way. So right now, they're in a holding pattern. They have not come back to us. This is their process to complete, not ours. We can't just take it off because uh, um, we're not fans of a particular request. They have a right to, to uh, ask for a recommendation, and, and we have a right to say uh, yay or nay. That's, that's where that is. They have, they, st they have not finished their process. Um, the town is often the applicant for changes because we are often the applicant for changes, just like every other town around us. We apply to amend our ordinances, to update them. Sometimes they're Supreme Court rulings, sometimes they're states, state rulings that um, they, every session, they come up with ways to um, preempt the, the local governments. Uh, recently was, and I'll give you the great example, 2017, we passed a telecommunications ordinance aligned with federal law federal cases that protected our community the best we could based on uh, what we were allowed to do uh, legally. And then in 2018, um, the state legislature passed a telecommunications um, law that completely preempted our ordinance. And we were, at, we were beholden to them because uh, they have that right to do that. So the only thing we could do was adopt an uh, a aesthetic plan, which is what we did. Uh, I, I don't know how much that's going to protect us, but that's that's where we are. This, the state has a lot more power over us than people seem to realize. So I, it shouldn't, but it does. It's it's that's we're a creation of the state, and that's that's it is what it is. So um, I have a right to to come back and explain things. I don't need people to agree with me. I really don't. Um, I, I, I can get pretty opinionated on things, but I'm not so st stuck in my position that I won't listen to other people. Um, but I don't need to be threatened or insulted or um, take my words taken out of context. I'm sure I will find something on some next door post next week about something I said tonight because that's what that seems to be the modus operandi of some people. Just let's just take it out of context and then beat the crowd out of her. So I'm going to correct the record when I need to, and I'll take the hits. I'm term limited. No one is more happier about that than I am. So I'm done. I don't have anything else to say. Okay.